wouldn't think of late January as being prime time for any saltwater fishing. But in Cape May, New Jersey, the dead of winter is the best time to target giant tatag. With the sunlight just beginning to seep through the dense cloud cover, Chris Megan and I headed 30 miles southeast with our friends Captain Bob Cope and Captain Tom Daffin aboard the Fish and Fever 4. thing to do is take one hook, kind of come in. From these ones here, these are soft because they're shedders up on top there. Just hook them right through the legs, come right up on through. Take this one here, do the same with it, just like that. Kind of pull that tight a little bit, and you're ready to roll. Awesome. You got bit already? Yeah. Good. There you go. Come yeah. on back. Yeah. Oh, ho. This was your personal best, Jimmy. So what are we doing there, Cap? We're hitting the bottom and then coming right off it a little bit? No, leave it laying very still on the bottom. Very still. They like a very, very still bait. Good fish. There's your personal best. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Look at this guy. There's your personal best. It, um, I'm getting a bite here. We're going to let him eat. We're going to let him eat. There you go. Look at that. Nice you... big female there. Probably eight pound female. <laughs> wow, that took long, didn't it? I thought it would take a little longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting your teeth rattled. Oh, Hit oh there he is. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, this guy's bigger than yours. I can already tell. <laughs> Guys, we haven't been here five minutes. Just dropped down, picked up our first fish. Jimmy got about an eight-pound female. This guy feels he might be a little smaller. These jigging rods are like real nice feel to them, huh? They're, they're an awesome rod. They have uh, they got a ton of backbone to them. Very sensitive. This is awesome, huh? Oh, Jimmy, this guy's embarrassing compared to yours. There you go. Swing him right over here. <laughs> embarrassing, huh? <laughs> Seven-pound male. Yeah, we haven't been here. We've just put the lines down for the last well, two minutes, maybe? Two minutes. Two minutes, we just picked up two keepers. Ah! A bomb swung and missed, but we're going to work with him, guys. Hang with us. We're going to get over there. Captain's going to spend some quality time with him. That was awesome. So now you're mixing this bait up, Cap, huh? Yeah, the little bit bigger ones, I mean, you can cut them down some if they're chewing real good. If, they're, if you've got a good chew going like we do right now, it doesn't matter yeah. what you do. You do, it almost, do, almost doesn't matter what you put on there, you know? But sometimes they get very, very particular. What's the main line cap on That's this? That's a 65 pound braid. We have a 60 pound mono top shot, about a 12 footer. I usually start off with about 12 foot. That way, if you break off, you can keep tying your loops you up a little bit more. You don't have to go and retie it. You can get right. a And about a 14 inch piece of uh, fluorocarbon leader that goes onto the top loop and two hooks on that. And we're fishing uh, structure right now. This is a broke up wooden barge here, so it's kind of like spread around a little bit. Bob Cope tight. Oh, yeah. You got a, it looks like you got a swamp there, unless you're fishing a little light. This is easy, Tom. You want to try this? I got the rod. We can jerk the six pounders in the boat. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Look at that. <laughs> Bob, nice fish, huh? I guess Cadoos go to Cadoos. That's a uh, Dante Sorrentino Magic Tails jig there. Oh, it's be high stick. That's the way you hit them. You got a good head shake here. Yeah, here you go, Jimmy. I'm coming right over. Coming in hot. 
Jimmy, nice job. Yeah, he was just scratching it, and all of a sudden, all the weight just came off. You picked the Dude. weight up. Yeah, I love it when that's aggressive. When that's an aggressive fish. When they pick the weight up, that's an aggressive fish. Sling them. Sling them. That's almost. <laughs> Five pounder. Five pounds. What's the limit on these? January, February, and April is four a person, and November 16th to December 31st is six a person. Okay. set the hook on anything out here, it could be the record fish. We got the state record and we also have the junior world record. You know, you gotta kinda follow the bite with the water temperature. They like certain water temperatures. They feed aggressively in certain water temperatures, say, you know, anywhere from 44 to 50 is their probably their best water temperature to fish. There you go, big man's on. Tell me when you got collar. Tight, tight, tight. Come on. I'm with you. That's a double digit fish. Yep. Double digit? Could be. Pretty Could close. Very well be a double digit fish. You want to swing them out? Yeah, that's 10. Coming over. Coming in. Right over. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Look at we that. We slang sixes. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at the color on that. That's a we female. just picked up a six on this side, a beautiful female like that. I think this is fish five. Cope just picked up fish six, and I want to say that's a double digit that's fish. That's about a double digit ten there. Oh, we're fishing in a wreck here. You said it was an old, old wooden ship. Yeah, it's old, old wooden barge. It's very broke up. Yeah. And but just enough structure for these fish to hang on? Exactly. You don't need a ton, you just need the right kind. Look. <laughs> He's gonna eat yours in a minute. Look at that. Hey. <laughs> um, so what is it about January that just makes it the best time for these you know, monster tog? There's a lot less boats, so there's a lot less fishing pressure. We're fishing a little bit deeper water, and there's a lot of migratory fish. They move east and west, these blackfish, but there's also a lot of resident fish to these wrecks. With the less fishing pressure, we're able to sit on them for a while longer and see if we can get them bigger fish that have been sitting there for the last 15 years to see if we can get them to bite, those bigger fish. That's why we like this time of the year a lot. So there's fish that'll just sit on this one wreck their whole lives. This is long. where they live. Wow. Yep. And it's kind of funny, like sometimes you'll actually be able to tell the difference between a a resident and a non-resident. Like, let's say you catch like a 10 pounder and it's like, let's say it's 25 inches, right? And then the next fish he catches another 10 pounder, but he's like 23 inches. It looks like a short fat football. That's the resident fish. Whoa, there you go, good booyah. job. <laughs> He's not as big as he, he gave a good accounting in the beginning, but I don't know if he's. Well, you'll see what happens when yeah, he. Exactly, when he comes up. Might have him hook a little wonky there too, because there's two hooks. It was just so subtle, but it was like tap, tap, you know, and then yeah, it. Yeah, they're was just no scratching on it. Nope. Good fish. Here we go. Beautiful fish. Nice fish. Look at that. Nice fish there. What do you figure that is right there? Seven pound fish. Look at that, huh? Solid seven. Solid seven, seven, seven and a half. Look at the tail on yeah. these things. They're made for powers. The big yeah, paddle they tails are. I got, you know, like we have people call us, to, you know, we tell them, you know, part of the season, you know, they want, when they want to go and tell them, yeah, we'll take a blackfish. And they're like, well, what's that? I was like, it's Jersey's version of a grouper. That's the best way for me yeah, to describe yeah, I, it. I would it. say that's a great description of it. It really yep. is. Probably one of the most frustrating things with black fishing is when do I swing? You'll be standing there holding your rod, nice and still, you don't want to let it bounce. And then you're going to feel a little scratch bite, which is the most textbook way they're going to bite first. They're coming up there and chewing on the crab. 
a lot of guys like that are novice to this, they say, oh, you got to set the hook before you get the bite. Well, it's totally wrong. You'll feel your scratch bite, and it really feels like somebody just scratching on the rod, and you got to wait. It might take 30 seconds, it might take a minute, and all of a sudden you'll start to feel harder thumps. When you set the hook on a blackfish, there's a little bit of a shock value. There's about a 10-foot buffer zone. That's your 10-foot of lead to be able to get a big blackfish out of the structure. When you hit the fish, the rod comes all the way to the top, and you start to crank here. A lot of times when you hit them, they will come up with the, come up with the bait as a little bit of a shock, you start to crank, and when he realizes he's going the wrong way, he's gonna dive back down to the wreck. That 10 foot of buffer zone is your only shot of getting him away from there. You have to take advantage of that at all times. <laughs> That's called the coke twist. A lot of guys won't do that. Watch this dog shark come up. Ah, blackfish. Little dude. No, I don't think of this. Huh? Yeah, what the hell? We saved the uh, space. Thank you. Pretty female, isn't it? Bob, show the folks at home what the difference is between the male and female as far as identifying See them. See the colors? Yeah. The so males are all white down here. Push. Really? So what about the other colors, though, Tom? You were talking about the other colors on the back side, they're too. They're grayer. They're, they're much grayer fish, Luke. See those teeth? Look at the difference between them two fish, the coloration and the, and the shape see of the, the heads. Color, shape of the head, the color, the white, all yeah, white. Yeah, right. Lighter gray color. See how that's modeled going across there, almost like a camouflage yeah, on right. the females? You see her as a male. It has a more square chin. Hey, guys, when you come back, we hope to have another big fish on board. Everybody's in zen-like. Exactly. Everybody's in zen-like <laughs> concentration, waiting for the next bite. That's what it is. That's what it is, too. So weather conditions. I know they're 120 feet down, but I've heard guys say that the wind direction can affect how well they bite, or even the the pressure. Have you noticed anything like that with these fish? Or kind of like the fish on the west winds, best we can. Um, they do bite northeast real good too. Um, the pressure has a lot to do with it, though. If you have a real high pressure, or a rising, a fast rising pressure, you can see that the bite just shuts right off. I think they more like like a steadier uh, barometric pressure. When, a, when the weather's stable, the bite's usually real good. You don't want some kind of big ground swell a lot of times, like, like a ground swell can shut them down, because what happens is the hydraulics of the, of the waves yeah. will actually stir the bottom up a lot. And like, it might look clear up top, and the first six foot of the, off the bottom might be you hoo you know? Hmm. You can't see the crab, can't, and with all the silt and everything uh, stirred up, you won't be able to smell them. And there's, and it's real tough to build life like that. So I'll tell you what, from the first time that uh, preliminary, uh, oh, oh, that was no roll. That just happened. Over the rail. That's a nice Get fish. That'll eat. Nice fish. Look at the color on that. Cap, tell me about the different ages for a five pound tog, a 10, a 15 in some of these 20s that you guys have been getting down here? It varies a lot with the area you catch them in. The farther south you go, actually the younger those big fish are. There's, there's a longer growing season because of the warmer waters. And we donate all our racks to the state of New Jersey so the biologists can actually age them, sex them, and size them. Let's say like a 10 pounder down here, might be eight years old. Okay. All right, like a 20 pounder, 14-ish, Yeah. you know? 
But a 10 pounder up by us is going to be probably a 10 to 12 year old yeah, fish. Yeah, it'd be like almost twice, it's almost like twice the difference, yeah. twice the age difference there. And how about the taste of these fish versus up there? A lot of times the fish will kind of resemble the taste of what they're eating. So if they're eating lobsters, they're eating crab, that they almost have a sweet taste to them. Absolutely. Is that what these are like as yeah, well? Yeah, and you'll even see them when you cut them, like you can tell if the fish are on mussels or not, they'll get that pepper look to it. It looks like actually flakes of pepper in the meat. Wow. Yep, and we usually see that more inshore than we do offshore. Tom, so a couple years ago, you caught the New Jersey state record on this boat. Yep. That was that. That was in April, that not January. Correct. But yeah. still fishing these same type of. Yeah, we were fishing fishing a wreck in 125 foot of water. When we're fishing out here deeper. We're trying to target these bigger fish. You know, that's what the guys want. That's what they're coming down for. Catching limits are great, and catching a lot of fish is great. But they're looking for you know, like one specific fish. You know, we only had 10 fish that day on the boat, but seven of the Six of them were between 11 and a half and 16 pounds, and one of them was 25.4 pounds. Wow. And we busted off probably, I don't know, five or six other, like, you know, low teens, mid teens kind of fish that day as well. That's incredible. Yep. That was like, uh, that was April 17th, but it was after one of those real cold winters. The water temperature was still, it was still trying to get there for us on the inshore, but. So in a more typical year, the, most of the fish have been moving inshore by then, or yeah, usually by usually by the you know 12th to 15th of April, we can usually just fish in 60 foot of water and catch them like as fast as you can go, mm -hmm. kind of deal. So Jimmy, I'll tell you what, from the early years of Stormer when they first came out, I want to say six, seven years ago, I know Bob gave me a prototype, but how have you seen the Stormer change? Bob introduced me to them in the, at the Atlantic City Boat Show, like you said, six or seven years ago. And you know, when he said it's a neoprene top, first I thought it was gonna be heavy, it's gonna be bulky, but the first time I tried it on, they really have a, a lot of freedom of movement yeah. in them. They're not too heavy. I mean, this one definitely keeps me warm, but I wear it right through April, May. It just, you know, I'll have a couple extra layers when I'm fishing in January like this, and then I'll just wear this over a t-shirt in April, or early May, and it's, it's really a great cold weather jacket that I've really, uh, really come to love. You know, Captain Bob, I know he was instrumental in helping them design some of their, their bibs and their jackets and just saying, you know, what we needed. And they, they listened to the fishermen, really made a great coat and some great foul weather gear. Sean? Yeah. Where are you at, man? Nice fish? Yeah, it is right. Get him. Look at the chin on that. Look thing. at that guy. That's a real That's wow. a nice fish. Look at that. Get a picture of that. That's 11. Dude, he's got the fireman. What is that guy's name? Fireman Bill? Yeah. The, remember, remember Jim Carrey? Yeah, that's right. Fireman Bill. <laughs> you gotta show him the love. <laughs> So the fishing's been running hot and cold. We're in a little bit of a slow spot right now, but it's been going that way. We're, we'll have 10 minutes where we're not getting any bites, then everybody will be getting bites for about five, 10 minutes. So we're gonna stick it out here and try to find some more big tog. As the day wore on, the bites came less and less frequently until Captain Tom swung aboard one last fish to fill out our limit. With some weather approaching and a 30 mile run ahead of us, we pulled the anchor and pointed the bow toward Cape May. Bob and Tom made quick work of the fish and Chris and I made plans to take our fresh fillets to the British Beer Company to have them prepare this delicious bottom fish. Here I'm going to start with the fish taco. I'm going to dress it with some marinade, fresh herbs, the fresh herb rub. Because I'm going to do a jerk rub taco, I have some jerk spice here. I'm just going to coat it all over that fish, right over to my fresh herb rub. And I'm going to be searing this for approximately four minutes. Now I can flip this over. Here I'm going to do some rice and beans. Now I can add a 
add my green beans, red beans, and rice. And fresh herb, scallion thyme. Just my fish right on top. And a little bit of this pickled vegetables along the top. My rice and beans. avocados. That would be our fish taco for the day today. Okay, I'm going to move, move along to the fish and chips. We've been going through a lot of fish, especially since we move over to local fresh fish. We seem to be even selling it even more. So now I'm going to set the fish and chips up. Hey guys, we're down here at the Falmouth Heights BBC. Jessica Hoppins, the manager here at the BBC. Jessica, I know they did it three different ways. This one, very traditional kind of fish and chips. Tell me yes. about the other two. So this is the our take on the fresh cash of the day, uh, which we will have on our new menu. And there is the Caribbean jerk fish tacos. Fish tacos, that yes. way. I'm gonna pass that around to you guys. Help yourself, take a little bit of that. Um, how many BBCs are there throughout There's the year? Uh, There's 14. 12 in Massachusetts, two in New Hampshire, and we just opened uh, our newest location in Worcester. We were up front, I think I counted 15 on tap beers anyways. There's 26, we have 26 lines here. And I think I missed nine. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com from the entire crew at the BBC and on the water, thanks for tuning in. Phoebe, I gotta catch up to you on that beer right there, huh? Jessica, thanks so much for having us. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming down. <laughs>